My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and I'm not in this shop, I'm here, that's the one. And so basically what we're going to do is we are going to test um, Evans, and if I scoot across, I have some Evans um, Power Sports. Um, I've left this to get to ambient temperature, and it hasn't been opened yet, you can see it's got the, the clicky thing, it's about to come off. So I haven't opened that yet. I've also got some propylene glycol uh, just to hammer home the point. Um, we've also got some tap water, sweet, if you can see that. And I've also got some, and this isn't any kind of plug or anything shit like that, but this is some Coma Extreme G40 shit. This went in the SV. Um, this is just some, you know, fucking coolant that I have that's brand new. Um, that's just lying around. So, what we're going to do is, I'll show you a picture now, is I've weighed um, the actual water, so we're going to use 80 millilitres for the simple fact these beakers have 80 millilitres on the side. I'll fill it to there and then um, actually um, weigh it just to make sure that's obviously taking the weight of the glass away, um, or zeroing out the weight of the glass and then filling it with water and whatever. So what we're going to do is, I've also got a data logger, um, if I can reach over to the computer. I've also got a uh, thermocouple data logger called a Hobo, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, so we're going to, if I can show that, because that's held down with some magnets. So this is the uh, thermocouple data logger, and we are going to, actually I can start that up now actually. Um, so this is a four channel one, I do want an eight channel one. So this is actually going to log, so not only can we just look at the temperature uh, from the thermocouple we have in the background and the timer. Um, oh there it is. We want channel one and two. We only want channel one and two. So when I press start it will start recording with the hobo jobby. So what we're going to do is Channel 1 is going to be the actual hot plate, so I have a hot plate here set to 200 degrees. Um, and what we're going to do is, we are going to, I've got an aluminium plate, so that's fucking boiling. Um, so that's basically, it's a even distributor, because this hot plate is basically a ring inside, and it's hotter in the centre than it is the outside. At least this aluminium block will kind of even out that temperature a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to put um, a thermocouple, or two thermocouples, into the uh, water so we can see its temperature rise and we can data log it so you'll be able to see it here. Um, that's 28 degrees Celsius because it's right next to the bloody hot plate, you can see it drop there so you can see that's, that's working. Uh, so all the water and all the ovens and stuff, they've all been sat at ambient temperature for about two hours, three hours, something like that. But we'll see the start off temperature and all the rest of it. So let me just set this up. And all we're going to do is we're going to, with our thermocouples and all this, we're going to plonk the water on here and we're going to time as soon as I touch on there. So we'll have time, we'll have temperature of the actual water, we'll have temperature of the hot plate, and we'll have both actually data logged so we can actually look at the graphs after the fact. Um, and this basically all I'm doing is showing you how much energy that water can absorb and we're going to do the same for propylene glycol and Evans we're going to use the 50-50 mix of antifreeze the Coma Extreme G40 whatever it's called and then we're going to do a few other things just to fuck around and then that'll be this video done right then let's read the rock and roll so my data logger hoboy thing there you can see it's got two temperatures on it so it's saying that the hot plate here is 260 well, 265 I think it's sporadically every like 30 seconds because it's logging it instead of showing you on here just gives you a brief of what it is um, and the water is 22.3 which is close to that I think that the hobo is a lot more sensitive um, than that thermocouple readout we've got in the background there any road let's stop fucking around what we need to do is, we know the temperature of the water, all is good, let's rock and roll. Now, <laughs> can you see that? Yeah you can, we just wait.
and nearly there. <laughs> now what you can see here is you see how it's dancing around is because that water when it turns into steam is very when it, you go through that phase transition of water to a gas uh, from liquid to a gas it actually takes an awful lot of heat with it so you'll see that it's dancing around at this temperature and our hot plate is still it's 242 it says here so the water is absorbing this temperature it is absorbing the energy but it's also getting rid of it quite efficiently so they keep on going on about these um, cavitation bubbles and all the rest of it but uh, in a sense that's also part of how the water process works in a cooling system if there are if there is boil like this even under pressure that actually takes a lot of the heat away with it the cavitation that happens inside diesels is not the same thing that's due, due to basically that's uh, void cavitation exactly the same as a propeller or an impeller um, you know that's uh, and, and what happens in your forks and your suspension which is basically pulling a, a liquid apart so quick that voids literally appear and then when they collapse because they're a perfect vacuum when they collapse all the atoms that are around that sphere of, of nothingness all collapse in and it's, it's the force, it's the energy of all that collapsing. You can even see light being produced from it. You can see here that we're still dancing around that 100 degrees. And as soon as we hit the 100 degrees, I'll, uh, I'll knock it off. We're nearly there. So that's all going to go to, I want that dial there to say 100 degrees. And as you can see, the water, we can even use the fact of when it hits 99, we can just use that. Like I said, this isn't representative because we've got a glass layer to go through, and number two is we're not under pressure. You know, we're not in a sealed system, and we're not in an engine. You know, engines get a lot hotter than 250 degrees. This is just to demonstrate, because there's some videos on YouTube demonstrating a glass of this and a glass of Evans and how Evans doesn't boil and all this kind of crap. All right, we'll call it there at 15 minutes because this is just going to continue to dance around and I can stop it. And what we're going to do really quickly is I'm going to weigh it as well. Um, so we get to see uh, how much, in a sense, how much weight it's lost due to evaporation. Get my other gloves so I don't burn my hands off. Um, because we've lost a lot of mass uh, due to the evaporation as well. Which also shows you another thing that water can do. Even though we've lost some of the water, uh, you can actually calculate how much energy it would take to vaporise um, that amount of water. So, where's my other glass? Let's use that as our zero. So the glasses weigh about 40. 44 grams. We've lost quite a substantial amount actually. We've lost about um, six, seven. Right now we've done that. Let me set back up and we'll stick in the Evans. Fuck it, let's do. No, that's not. Let's do. Um, Let's do the 50-50. So now we're moving on to the, uh, what's it called, this shit, this G40 stuff. It's got blue on the thing and it? it comes out pink. I don't know, I was kind of expecting it to be blue. But there we go, this is the stuff. Now it actually weighs a bit more than water because um, uh, ethylene glycol and what have you and some of the additives weigh more than pure water, or just tap water. So we're going to go with that. Um, start up, reset that, there we go, three, two, one, just like Mythbusters, it's like real telly, as you can see we've got our 80 millilitres there, move our probes to the sit in the middle, same kind of jobby. Let's go!
Jesus Christ. We've got no real vapour formation at the top, which means it's not really getting rid of the heat as well. But this is a fair test, you know, same same volume. It's actually swollen. I don't know if you can make that out on the camera, but it's actually swollen out as it's expanded because it's absorbing the heat. Um, but because it's not literally boiling, because it's not boiling away, because there is none of this vapour formation that they keep on banging on about, it's swelling. Now, if they say there's no pressure, we will do a test. Um, I'll do a test where I'll get, uh, basically I need to fabricate a stainless steel uh, container. And what we'll do is we'll fill it and we'll have a pressure gauge and we'll heat it and we'll see which one. Same kind of thing, temperature, a constant temperature or a near constant temperature and we'll actually have a look and see uh, this no pressure system that they keep on banging on about which is physics defying, it's bullshit. You know, look, we're on uh, 95 degrees and it's not even, it's nine, just nine, nine minutes. You know, it's, it, just, it doesn't have the capacity. And this is 50-50, you know what I mean? Next we'll do the propylene glycol and we'll see what that does. See, that's why I want to weigh them as well, because that gives us a um, good indication of, um, you know, regardless of volume and regardless of pressure, um, mass is mass at the end of the day. So we'll actually be able to see as a comparison of how much has boiled away. Now, yes, um, antifreeze based coolants are 50% something else and 50% water. So you are going to have half the evaporation. So you'd expect that you'd have half the mass loss. But you see, look, we're teetering on it now. And, uh, yeah, well, I can go back and show you exactly what temperature, because I can't remember, I'm fucking sat here doing two things at once. Um, but yeah. Let's see, where was we? So it's 73 grams um, when we weighed it. You see there's 100. See, 100 in, in 10 minutes. So that's just showing you the difference between the two. And you can see it just keeps on rising and keeps on rising and keeps on rising. Um, now they say that this is a good thing, but this isn't a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Um, its heat absorption is crap. Any road, let's stop that there. Let's call that a day. And uh, let me fish this off. And then we'll quickly weigh it and see how much of this is, uh, how much mass we've actually lost. Which obviously will be less. Then we'll stick the uh, ethylene glycol in, propylene glycol in, which is basically what Evans is, and then I'll show you the Evans after that. All right, boys and girls, now we have uh, cleaned out our beaker. I'm using the same beaker every single time, so it has the same thermal mass, um, and all the rest of it is thoroughly dry and clean. It's actually wet on the bottom. Um, so now, turn my scales on, zero out my glass, and now we're going to add some propylene glycol. Now this was half the price, I think this is, this is half a litre and this cost me three quid. And this is food grade malarkey. See, it's still got the don't break seal on it, can you see that yet? So that's exactly what this shit is. And all I'm going to do is just fill it to the top, it's clear, it's quite thick. Had a viscosity gauge actually, and then that's 87, 87 grams. That's how much that shit weighs. Uh, let me get a photo of that, and then we'll uh, lace her up and all the rest of it like we did with the other ones. And uh, so that's the weight of it. All is good. I'll try and do as much of this in shot so it looks like so I'm not cheating. Because <laughs> you always have them fuckers, don't you? Ah, oh, we didn't see you actually do that, bastard. So, like, alright, alright, calm down, sweetheart. Fucking hell, he's got a fucking hernia. 
so you drop your tampons. Um, right, so there's our thermocouple. What the fucking hell that noise is? So that's now reading, that's actually reading this shit. Um, put our hobo data logging thermocouple in there as well. So one day we'll get around to doing this on an actual engine. Just for the shits and giggles about looking about um, cooling systems as well. So 1056, let me quickly write that down. 1056, that was 5050. So I, I expect this to be so close on the data logger. Let me just actually turn that on. Start capturing. What temperature have we got? There we go, 24.64 degrees of the actual goo. And. Oh, fucking hell, nearly tipped it everywhere. And. Um, 262 degrees for the actual thingy. So. No, reset, idiot. Go. So I don't know if you can see the 80 mark on there, we'll actually see what this hap what happens to this as well. Right, let me fucking just leave it to it. What I'm more interested in is the um, the curve. I want to see the curve between this propylene glycol. I want to show you the curve between propylene glycol and um, you make your mind up what we call them that. Yeah, we call them that. So there you go. That's our propylene glycol. That's eight minutes fifty-eight. Uh, that's propylene glycol. That's that one. Let's stop our data logger. Let's get this shit off the furnace. Let's give it away. Off the furnace. <laughs> Right then, let's get rid of the uh, glycol shit and let's get our Evan stuff out. Right then, the moment of truth. This is the uh, the ultimate Evans experience. Fucking hold on to your pants. We're going to get fucking blown away by this magic liquid's ability to... Um, what's the word? Fuck us over. <laughs> um, this shit's well expensive, so let's just fucking stop the app in and get the cracking. Here she is, this is what we're all here for. This is the magic liquid. Um, like I say, this was 16 quid, this was 30 quid. It's twice as much stuff, and you might say, yes, but half of this is water. This doesn't need water. Yes, but this is four, five litres of coolant. This is two litres of coolant. If your system requires five litres, you're going to need fucking three of these at 30 quid a pop. 
where this is 5 litres and this was 16 quid. You see what I'm saying? It's all the same shit. Thing is, this stuff doesn't work as well and we're going to fucking show you. Alright, so crack the bad boy open. Ooh! Mmm, it must have a bitter in agent in it, so it stinks. Yeah. <coughs> God, that actually isn't nice. The other ones don't smell of anything. Really? Zero that out. Oh. Oh, it's made to look cool. They've made it look cool. You can't pour the fucking stuff out either. Yeah, put far too much in there. Um, the med look cool because it's red. This is awesome because I thought it was going to be clear. And because the videos I've seen, I haven't seen this motorbike one. I've just seen the videos that we've all watched and I did the review on and stuff. So I didn't realise that this shit was actually red. Which is awesome because that helps us separate. You know, it's like, oh my god, that is so much like the propylene glycol. Did Matt cheat and put propylene glycol? Um, as you can see, look, brand new container, you can see it all dribbling out red. This stuff is fucking red. Because there's always some cunt. You know what I mean? Right, so let's pour some of that back in there. Let's have a bit more. It's quite thick, actually. It's quite viscous. I'm going for the 80 millilitres. Which is obviously volume. That's 91, this stuff's quite heavy. Um, and yes, this has got the elastic band out. I zeroed it with the elastic band off, uh, with it on it, so it was zeroed until I put the liquid in. This stuff's really quite heavy. Fucking hell, quite surprised. This is the heaviest out of the lot. And let me get a good view of the uh, the level, so you think that not, so you know I'm not cheating. Right. There. It's really quite thick as well. It's thicker than the uh, thicker than the water uh, than the glycol. I don't know if this has ethylene glycol or not. Getting data sheets on these bastards is quite hard because obviously they're trying to fucking hide it. Um, if anyone's got a data sheet for this, what's it called? Power Sport. Power Sports, if anyone's got the actual data sheet for Power Sports, please send me it, it'd be wonderful. So I must say, uh, 8.58, let's reset. What the fuck is going on here? Thank you. <laughs> right, so you can see, we're actually measuring right now, we are measuring... Um, start the hobo up. We're measuring the actual fluid there, so that's the actual fluid temperature. That's 23.78. Uh, um, let's just set up the data logger. Uh, blah 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 blah. Start logging, fixed intervals. Blah 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 blah. Start, we'll start logging that now. Make sure our thermocouples are working. Yep, yeah, 264 for the actual hot plate, uh, 24.77 for the actual fluid. Right, let's give this fucking a go. Right then. Well, she's not doing very well, is she? <laughs> you got to remember, 
the water test. I've done these one after the other. Every time I turn the video, every time I turn the um, camera off, uh, I'm literally just going to go and wash a beak around, come back, set up the data login. You know what I mean? It, it, that's it. And then going away, coming back, going away, coming back, and that's it. Um, we're at 98 degrees. 99 99 degrees and the fucking water didn't even boil it never got up to a hundred it hovered around here at 15 minutes hey there's a hundred there's a hundred quite stably right so we'll stop it there that's eight minutes uh, 42 and for all intents and purposes our uh, glycol, our propylene glycol, which is this. So basically, all it is is Evans is this shit five, six times the price because they had food colouring. Now you might say, yes, Matt, they've got corrosive inhibitors. It's actually this that does most of the corrosive inhibiting. Without the water, without the free oxygen that has been dissolved in water. Um, let's get this shit off. And uh, so there you have it, boys and girls. That's the test. You can see how much it's swollen. You can see that. That's swollen an awful lot. We'll get the scales out and weigh the fucker. Yes, you know, it can keep on heating up. But the fact of the matter is, is that this stuff doesn't sit here like this in an engine. It fucking circulates. We want it to absorb as much heat as possible, take it to the radiator, and then dump it. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that water can absorb more heat than glycol can, any kind of glycol. Water can just absorb more heat, so the fact of the matter is it's less likely um, a chance of your engine overheating. Yeah, you see it's lost a bit of weight, it's fuming, so it doesn't boil, they say. Let me just take a picture of this. But I don't know how good I can get an image of this. Um, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up, but she is fuming. I don't know how well you can see that. Got something black. Something black. She is fuming away. And people might say, well, that's the air, the moisture in the air, hitting the top of the liquid and condensing. If you think that's the case, come and check out the fucking weight of it. So here's the weight of it, and can you see the weight dropping? Now the weight is dropping because it is evaporating. That's why the that's why the weight is dropping. Now this is just Evans clean out the bottle. This is the one we've just heated up, and as you can see, the weight is dropping because you can probably see the steam coming off it. I say steam, it's not steam, it's gaseous propylene glycol and all the other shit that they put in it. Right then, so that's the uh, the end of all that. Um, what I'll end up doing is I need to go and um, export all the graphs from the hobo shite and I need to um, basically just, uh, blah, 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 just do some overlays and stuff. So I need to do a tiny bit of work on um, the graphs and all the rest of it. I'll do a voiceover at the end of this video. Uh, I'll do a voiceover now with the results. And uh, But by the look of it, you can tell that Evans and propylene glycol are extremely close together. And the water didn't even boil. We never got that to fucking boil. Never got to read 100 degrees. And the 50-50 was around about 11 seconds, something like that. 11 minutes, something like that, which you kind of expect. But we can't just stop there. We've got a bonus feature. Do we dare do... Don't fucking start that again, you pillock. Do we dare do what we shouldn't do? So let me just start the uh, data logging shit again. Right, that's booted up. Loading and poof. So let's do <laughs> let's do what we shouldn't do, which is here's some ethylene glycol. Uh, here's some uh, Evans. But we've got 40 millilitres in here, and this is 40 millilitres of water. And close your fucking eyes, because this is going to be dangerous. Ah! 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 Oh. Well, no.
I'm off the mountain. Nothing happened. I thought I thought I was going to die. Oh, right. Let's just test this. See if we can make uh, Evans waterless coolant better than the shit that it is. We haven't actually got enough water in there. Let me quickly go get some more. See as well if we can see me actually adding this in on the data logger. There we go. So, because this is a bit of a bodge, I haven't weighed it, I haven't done anything like that. Let's see how long this lasts. Let's see if we can make Evans, Evans waterless coolant better by making it water included coolant. Because this is a bonus feature, we can stick this on here as well. Oh, no, let's not do that. Let's do that. No, nope, we're coming up. Yeah, maybe it is, because I can see bubbles forming. It's as almost if... They're not mixing. It looks like they are, but maybe they're not. There's a hundred. Right, we've got, have we got a stable hundred. There we go, a stable hundred. Oh no, we're not. You see, this is the thing, we're... We're not a stable hundred. There we go. Right, we're calling that. That's nine minutes thirty-five, and you can hear it popping. Um, so it's like it's boiling, but it's not. It's really strange. Uh, and if you look, it hasn't. Uh, it has jumped above four hundred. Right, let's stop our data logging and uh, what I'm doing now is I'm allowing these two liquids to get up to the same temperature and then we're going to look at cool down and that will give us an idea about thermal conductivity of the two. Right then, so we're back at uh, the computer and I can now start showing you some of the data and what have you. So what we have is just to give you a demonstration I have uh, all the data water 50-50 propylene Evans and Evans the mix which is part of the bonus series <laughs> or the bonus video um, and that, the line will become um, clear in a minute but basically this is what the hobo stuck out we've got time across the bottom we've got disease, uh, d disease. we've got degrees in celsius on one side you can see a bit of the table so this is basically it spits out a time index the hot plate temperature you can see here and the actual temperature of our fluid and it's recording pretty much every second um, so as you can see or one of the things i want to just show out with show with this original plot here is that you can see this is our 50 50 um, and you can see that uh, this is the hot plate temperature and you can see as this 
uh, 50-50 starts to heat up. You can actually see that the uh, hot plate cools down um, as it's drawing energy. And then this point, I've obviously cropped it here, but because that's 100 degrees to make it clearer for the next bit. But you can see there that as soon as I remove the fluid from the hot plate, then the hot plate starts to climb in temperature again. So that's just a cool nifty thing. So we don't really need to see the hot plates anymore because um, don't need to see that either or the hot plate. So what we've got here, just to make it a lot clearer, is just the water. So this is the water, as you can see. And um, we're climbing from 23 degrees or 22.41. And we're just climbing, and you can kind of see the curve, and this is kind of what you expect. Um, you can see that initially it actually absorbs quite a lot of energy, and then as um, evaporation takes place and it starts to conduct to the air and stuff like that, then this actually starts to taper off. You need more and more energy per second, so uh, watts, joules, whatever you want to use as a um, as a unit to basically heat the fluid up even more and more and more. But as you can see, we are cropped off right at the top there. It did actually peak to 100, um, but it barely made it. This here, you can see from this graph here. So that's our water. So the next thing we want to do is we want to compare that to our uh, normal coolant. So what's the difference between coolant and water? So this is what we have here. And you can see quite clearly that um, well, one, the water's a bit more stable. Now, it could be something to do with the measurements and the thermocouples I'm using, so, you know, we're not uh, ruling that out whatsoever. But you can see there straight away that the um, just by adding ethylene or propylene glycol, or even a mix, a 50-50 mix, that um, this greatly reduces how much uh, energy that uh, your coolant can absorb. However, it is actually the water that is giving this glycol this ability because you can see the curve of the water there. So then when we move on, um, we've got the propylene just on its own. So this is just 100% straight propyl uh, propylene glycol. And you can see there, it does something erratic at first, like I say, um, it actually, uh, I don't fully understand the energy transfer rate. It could have something to do with the glass. The glasses will, um, you know, it kept at room temperature and stuff like that as well so it could be something to do with the interface between the aluminium and blah 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 but over the stretch of the actual curve um you know this is quite believable because you get basically to this midpoint here where they all seem to start to cross and this is where um you basically can see where they start to split off and the propylene glycol just on its own is um, you know basically gets to 100 degrees at this point. So basically, what is this saying? Well, this is saying that um, you know it can absorb less energy. And when you look at all the hot plate graphs, they pretty much look exactly the same. So now we've got that one. We can then um, select the data and add the absolute awesome Evans in right there. And as you can see, it's actually a lot worse. It's not just like the propylene glycol. Um, like I said, they all start off at pretty much the same temperature. You know, the Evans is 24.5, and it was late, a bit later on in the day and stuff like that. It's all around about 20. The water was cooler, yes, but it's only a degree, and it, <laughs> that one degree isn't going to account for all of this here. You know, the glycol, you can see that the Evans stuff, and that's why I have this line here. This line here represents exactly when the Evans boils... Um, the Evans boils there and it's been a dick there we go the Evans boils there at 8 minutes at 8 minutes 38 and the water at 8 minutes 38 8 minutes 34 so it's you know it's 90 91 so we're still 10 degrees behind it and this is exactly what they mean by Evans um, will be 10 degrees hotter and you've got to remember that the average temperature and that this is massively generalizing but the average temperature of a running coolant inside an engine is around about and we're talking at the actual cylinder and in the cylinder head if you take the average of the whole cylinder volume uh, not where usually the temperature sensor is is around about 117 degrees so you know 117 degrees um, you know it's way off this scale here uh, for the water you know it would have boiled by here but 
Um, if it was kept under te under pressure, then you can imagine the watt scaling up to about here. You know, 117 degrees is off this actual scale. It's only goes up to 110 because of the data that I collected. But the Evans is well, well above that. You know what I mean? And as you can see, they're actually branching apart. Now, yes, this is to do with the boiling, but that's what they keep on banging on about. So the Evans is going to be running, if you're running at 117 degrees, you know, you're going to be running about 130, something like that, 130, maybe 140. You know, which is over the temperature that your oil has been designed, has been manufactured to operate at. Now, they keep on banging on about the pressure, which is absolute fucking rubbish. I will do an experiment later on, not soon. I mean, like, in I don't know, a couple of months or something like that, um, where we basically put them in a pressure vessel and we actually test the pressure as they heat up. Now, obviously, as we heat them up, um, you know, the pressure inside is going to increase. I'm not trying to um, redo standard physics here or anything like that. What I'm trying to demonstrate is that they say that sodium glycol... Uh, no, that their actual coolant um, doesn't put stress on, you know, they say no pressure, you don't need a cap, you don't need this. It's, and we'll see how much pressure that is. Because you've got to remember that you have thermostats in your engines, which actually black, blocks off the cylinder from the rest of the cooling system, allowing the coolant to get up to temperature. We'll do more on coolant systems full stop anyway. But yeah, as you can see, this just points out that there's something crazy, crazy going on. And um, it's just nowhere near as good, you know, if we were to basically get rid of the water and just keep these two, you can see there, you know, you don't have to be a genius, it's changed scales now so we can get rid of that. Um, cool, just get rid of that. But you can see there's a massive difference between having coolant, and look, they're literally the same starting temperature here, and the separation between the two, you know, is, um, well, mental. You know, and this is the benefit that water gives you by adding, having a 50-50 system. You know, if we um, even just have the propylene, uh, propylene glycol on the Evans. It's a bit of a weird, funky thing going here. This was when I added it, I had to check the time index and all the rest of it. It didn't just start from there. Um, but they would be very, very similar, whatever wobbly, weird state happened here. They would be extremely silly, uh, similar, you know, if you take the... Um, uh, trend line. If you get the trend line from there and put the formula in, I'm sure that they're very, very similar. You know what I mean? Um, and then we get. Oh, that's an exponential. I fucking forget that. Any anyway, rod. <laughs> I'm just doing this on the fly, so yeah, you can you forgive me for that. But um, oh, you you have to give forgive me for that. The weirdest thing is that I wanted to actually point out was the um, the Evans versus the Evans plus water. That was really quite strange. Um, as you can see, it's it's more erratic. It started off at a higher temperature. Um, it did help, did the water, as you can see from that, not by much. You know, when did it when did it quit? Nine and a half something. So it did actually help. And then if we add in the um, this even this even started at a higher temperature because it was later on in the day. Uh, yeah, if we had the regular in, the actual coolant. So you can see there that the Evans stuff is actually benefiting from the fact that it has water, even though it's quite erratic, and I'm, I'm not quite sure about... Um, it might have been the fact that it wasn't mixed properly. You know, we didn't actually mix it. I literally poured one into the other and then stuck it on the hot plate. Then added a bit of water, and that could possibly be this cooling bit here where I dripped that water in. That could have cooled it a bit there. But still, you know, the amount of volumes we're talking, that, and you saw how much I poured in, it was fuck all. Um, you can see that you've got Evans there. Now, all of these, yes, are all samples of ones. There was no repeats and all the rest of it. But this, all this physics is well understood. The numbers are on the internet. You can find them in chemistry textbooks. Um, the reason why I haven't done a sample of 10 or anything, you know, to give it some statistical relevance is the fact of the matter is it's all been done. We all know this. Even Evans themselves says water is the best coolant. Um, so what we're going to do is after this is in the next couple of months, um, well, I'm setting up an experiment now about corrosion. Um, and I've had a bit, a few, you know, a few people put the comments in and all the rest of it. Um, I'm not going to expose it to air because that's not how um, they claim this is working. They say this is in, in a coolant system. It's so basically your parts are submerged. What I am going to do is part of the galvanic corrosion bit is I'll have a block of aluminium 
and uh, drill and tap it and then put a, a mild steel, a clean mild steel, no black oxide coating or anything stupid like that, a um, plain mild steel nut, we're going to thread that in and then we're going to submerge it and then we're going to basically seal it by basically clean film in a beaker or something shit like that. We're going to seal it and then I am going to just basically leave that for six months and then six months later we'll come back and we'll see which one has corroded. Now yes we don't have heat cycling and all the rest of it, however it really shouldn't matter. The way they're banging on is that we're going to do water 50-50 and then the Evans. I want to see, you know, what is the difference. Basically, what I'm trying to point out is 50-50, you know, 50-50 antifreeze as good as Evans, you know, it, it's the same stuff. It's not really making a difference. They're just charging you three or four times the price just for the fucking kick of it and then coming out with all this shitty pseudo science and lack of understanding of what's going on just to try and get you to sell, you know. The thing is, it's fucking expensive and it's also, you know... It's not just the price of the bottle of the stuff, it's the flush out fluid you need and a refractometer or some stupid fucking litmus paper ribbons, you know what I mean, kind of thing. It's just... Uh... Any road, I hope you enjoyed that. It is a very, very long video, but I just wanted to get it all done, all in one. You know, we've got the graphs at the end here so you can see what's what. You know, I'm just going to leave a final thought with all of them just uh you know just all of them sat here on the graph and you can just see get rid of that bloody equation and we'll get rid of that bloody trend line because that's wrong um but yeah you can see there what's going on we don't really care we'll have a quick look at the bottom so the starting temperatures you know the 50 50 mix was a higher temperature the rest of them are pretty close the water did dip i think the water started um well actually i've got it here what did the water start at? 22.4 is what the water started at. Um, so, yeah, you know what I mean? And then there's there's your finishing results. So we've got water, we've got the pink for the actual 50-50, we've got the, um, what's this one? That's the uh, Evans Plus water, we've got the propylene glycol in green, and we've got the Evans in red, trying to match the actual fluids we had apart from the green. Um, so there you have it. I hope that makes sense, and I will see you in a bit.